Hey folks, Tim Miller here, and I wanted to, as I watch what's going on in our country, I want to be a watchman on the wall. I want to explain very clearly from my perspective what is systematically happening across our government. Now, first, I apologize. Many of you know I've been kind of out of the loop. Um, I was pulled kind of into the Secret Service discussion, the national media regarding two assassination attempts of President Trump, which is that's concerning because if you listen to me and especially other real true experts like Dan Bongino, who's daily uh, interacting with folks inside of the Secret Service, we see an alarming, a almost a crisis type of situation happening. Not almost, it is a crisis where current agents are stepping up and they're saying, hey, wait a minute, something's really wrong here. And they're doing it in mass and they're being ignored and leadership is taking actions against them for simply standing up and telling the truth. Let me tell you from my perspective, having been a Marine Corps officer for more than 25 years, having been a police officer, having been an agent with the Secret Service and then with Homeland Security, and really having devoted my life to serving this nation, I'm in an absolute panic in terms of what we're watching happening right in front of our eyes. Now, listen to me. If you're a patriot and you love this country and you do not stand and prepare, I'm going to caution you that you're going to be a person with all that's going on that's going to have tremendous regrets, especially if you're a man trying to provide for your family, trying not to balance the fear out here with panic, but also not ignoring what's going on. And I want to talk to you patriots, all of you patriots, because I think my uh, folks that, that are with me, you are patriots. And by the way, YouTube does not like what I'm saying. Uh, I'm being you know, told that, I, that people have been unsubscribed. So here, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you want to be part of an effort to bring uh, to attention the things that need to be brought to attention, then I need you to like, share, subscribe, notify. But I need you to get everybody involved in becoming aware of what's happening. And just a little refresher, it wasn't three or four months ago, 37. Secret Service agents came, became whistleblowers and said, look, our, our agency can't do, because of all these woke policies, because of extremely biased leadership, we can't do our mission. Well, guess what? They were ignored. And since then, we've had two assassination attempts. And you all know, if it wasn't for God's grace, President Trump would not be here. So let's talk about the cancer that is literally destroying our nation. And I want to talk to you very briefly, which is why I really focus this towards patriots, towards people that believe in the United States. And in this time, in this time, you're willing to stand and do something because you can sit in coffee shops all day long. You can pontificate from home. But if you're not doing things, then it's likely not going to change. So I want to talk to you real quick like about Marcus Allen. Marcus Allen uh, has been an FBI employee since 2019. Prior to that, he was with the United States Marine Corps. I'm very fond of. I know the integrity in the Marines. And by the way, when I swore my oath the first time, it was to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Marcus is a United States Marine that served with integrity. He believes in the country. He went and deployed to uh, Iraq. 
and actually was, received numerous awards for his faithful service there. He comes back, he joins the FBI, right? Everything's a great story, right? Well, it was until Marcus had the courage to stand up and go, oh, wait a minute here. I'm seeing real disparity in how investigations are being conducted inside of the FBI. And let me give you a little clue. Uh, Mar Marcus is in a role in the FBI that requires the highest levels of security clearances. The reality is without those clearances, he can't do his job and therefore um, they're going to look to terminate him. The problem is, is those clearances can only be taken for just reasons. And he wasn't uh, at all obnoxious about bring. He went through the chain of command to bring forth his concerns about the disparity in investigations. And unfortunately for Marcus, there were people that didn't like that. Very high level people, people that actually, um, some could argue, were part of a concerted effort to redefine the FBI and to make it an organization that, you know, quite frankly, it shouldn't be. So let's take a look at this and you tell me what you think. Yes, sir. I would just say that I consider the hearing today my last act of service as a public servant for the United States of America. Uh, and I'll give you my professional opinion. Uh, I was an intel professional for our country for many years. Uh, and I would give recommendations and I'd also look at indications and warnings. So I would offer this to the American people as my warning to them. Since this is a warning to the American people, I say, I personally have no confidence that the FBI will rein in its own conduct. I've been persecuted along with Garrett, <clears throat> Steve and Kyle and countless other whistleblowers. It is my opinion that the Bureau used reprisal and fear to control the workforce. It has been a seemingly effective tactic. I personally believe that there are no current effective checks and balances against them conducting lawless action with any type of correction in a legitimate time frame. I welcome the work of the IG, but I think any type of lawless action, there's no legitimate time frame to rein them back in. Their ability to overclassify information can allow them to stonewall forever. To the American people, you have a duty as a citizen to vote and I strongly urge you to do so. It's how you participate in the American experience. I know people have doubts about election integrity, but you must vote. It is your claim. Stake your claim and don't forfeit it willingly. Have your voice heard. My other recommendations are in the natural order. First vote, the second is the second amendment. Arm yourself and know how to defend yourself. Make three to four friends in your neighborhood and promise to come to each other's mutual aid in times of harm, hardship. And during the Great Depression, people stocked up a pantry. So I think that's a good practice, especially in our economic times, and make sure you have three to four months of food. And as a person of faith, I'd say pray the rosary. Go to the First Friday devotions. That's for everybody, all my brothers and sisters of all faiths, and I know I'm Catholic, and read the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and live it every day. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for the time. You know, Mr. Allen, the fact that there are servants like you who have borne up under persecution that a lot of political leaders in this country do not care about is the thing that heartens the American people. And I'm confident the American people will, will, will resolve the situation no matter how, bad, how weak Washington is in response. Mr. Jordan, I'm sorry. Do you hear what he said? He's an FBI operational specialist that has access to all of the classified material. He is a dedicated Marine. He's a man of faith, man of courage, man of valor. And he is raising the alarm. I don't know if you heard his language. He's sounding the alarm, folks. This video ought to be everywhere. Every person that loves our country should listen to what Marcus Allen said. Because at the end of the day, it's horrifying.
Let me tell you why it's even more horrifying. I don't know if you've been listening to the news, but Director Ray consistently has been like, hey, red lights flashing, red lights flashing, bad things are going to happen. Well, Marcus would have been in a position to observe all that information and then say, hey, wait a minute. We're focused on going after certain people on uh, January 6th or Catholic priests, or we're devoting resources while ter known terrorists have walked across our border, felons released from Venezuelan jails, violent felons have entered, Haitians have migrated in mass into cities that simply aren't prepared. And let me tell you, folks, I am not anti-immigrant, but I'm anti-people that hate our country. And unfortunately, an entire mass of people. There are ec certain estimations regarding the number of Chinese age males that have come in. Why? Why would a Chinese age male come in, uh, or military age male? Why would he come in with a group apart from anybody in his family and then disappear? Why? What is going on? And folks, I want you to hear clearly from me. This should wake us all up to the seriousness of what's going on in our country. Now, here's the reality. This video likely is not going to get out. And unfortunately, crazy videos with all kinds of socialist-oriented propaganda, they go, you know, viral. But here's the point. If a few of us say, wait a minute, what did, Mar what did Marcus say again? He first sounded the alarm. Folks, let me be ultra clear, ultra clear. He's sounding the alarm for tyranny. When the FBI or any other organization, the Secret Service, the Department of Justice, when they can exercise the power that we, the people, have given them, to attack, constrain, and jail us, simply, that's called tyranny. And you got a choice to make, folks. You, everybody listening to this has a choice to make. You got a choice to make. It's kind of like my dad was a World War II vet. He had a choice to make. He could sit out and try to run or not really get involved in World War II, or he could step up and serve. And he stepped up and served with all of his heart. And because of his sacrifice and many millions like him, we have freedom today. But let me tell you, that freedom is not permanent. And a lot of what you and I do in this season right now is going to determine whether our kids and grandkids have freedom. Now, he, here's, if you listen, here's what Marcus said. He said, the first thing we all must do is vote. The most powerful tool we have. Folks, if you haven't voted or you have voted, uh, in the past, it's time to escalate our efforts. It's time to ensure that good people make it to the ballot box and that they vote for the candidates that are going to support freedom. They're going to support less government because we're seeing here, we don't need more government. The government has power right now that's scary. You look at the FBI, you look at the FISA scandals, you look at some of the investigations that have occurred. And folks, I, you know, people say, oh, you know, you, you've just turned on the government. No, I, I worked there. I, I was a Secret Service agent standing next to the president. I understand the government, but the government that I work for worked for the people. We have to decide what we're going to do, folks. This is a sacred point in time. And so what did he say? He said, we need to vote. He said, we need to speak out. How many of you all have spoken out for freedom for our country? How many of you all have gone to board meetings and said, no, this is wrong. This is evil. No. And then organized an effort to legally vote people out that aren't demonstrating the values of the people. He also said, exercise your Second Amendment right. Hmm. 
So I got to tell you folks, um, having been in very violent places and circumstances, if and when the violence that Director Ray is saying, red light flashing, we're already starting to see it. If that violence comes to your neighborhood, you need to be able to have the skills and the ability to protect yourself. Simple. End of story. You may say, oh, I, I've never been interested in having a weapon. Well, you might want to rethink that because if you don't, your family's at the mercy of those who do. And then what else did he say? Organize. Perhaps that's the most passionate plea that I have for you. It is time for us to organize in terms of being with like-minded people, like he said, that have a mindset of helping and sharing and supporting each other in the midst of a crisis. He referred to the Great Depression. That was America during the Great Depression. But see, right now we're split. And oh, by the way, that effort to split and divide and make people angry, that's intentional. There are those that would love to see the current structure of the U.S. come apart, and they're actively pursuing that agenda. I'll leave it to you to figure out who is that, but I will tell you this. Anybody advocating violence, like we're seeing directed against President Trump, anybody advocating violence, like we've seen spread across how many inner cities in the U.S., violence unparalleled in our history, despite being told that crime is coming down. That's amusing when you talk to the Sheriff's Association. They have a very different perspective. And so, folks, I just want to encourage you. I, I'm going to get back into doing videos again. I apologize. I've, I've really been tied up. We're trying to do some things to, to uh, help uh, across the globe. And, but I do want to, I want to sound the alarm. Please. Do not ignore this video. Please like, share, comment. Folks, I'm going to tell you, the parallel for me was when my dad told stories about those good people in Germany in the 1930s that sat by and watched power escalate and escalate, and the government became more aggressive, and they began to strip freedoms from, from average people, and then they began to identify entire classes of people, Jews, homosexuals, across the board as those people that don't deserve to live. Well, one of the reasons that Marcus was targeted was because he's a very faithful practicing Catholic. We've seen the FBI's bias in this. And folks, if anything else doesn't frighten you to the core, this should. Now, again, I don't know if this video will get out. I suspect it's going to cause a lot of attention, but I've been on national media a lot, you know, saying things that this government doesn't like. Uh, I will do everything I can do legally to vote and support the system that we have. But I'm also preparing, folks, and now is the time to prepare. So I hope this is thought-provoking. That's the purpose of it. I'm going to get back to practical things that we need to do to protect ourselves and our families. But let me be very clear as I close. The storm is not coming. It's here. It is a storm that is working every day to destroy everything that we love about our country, our freedoms, actually our prosperity. There are many, even within our own government, that are professing hatred for our government. So, so think about that. Elected leaders going to Congress, I support and, and swear that I'll defend the Constitution, yet they speak out horrible things about our government. And in the old days, if, if you attacked our government and, and you attacked the structure, um, it, it, it would have had consequences. But today, everybody's afraid and fearful to speak out. And I hope and pray that's not you and me. I hope and pray at the end of this short life, and we're able to look back and say, hey, we stood for righteousness. We stood for what was right, for freedom and the ability to do what we were created to do without an oppressive government utilizing every bit of power it has like they did against Marcus Allen 
guy, <laughs> they knew, they knew they were going to attack and they knew they were going to put him out on leave. And guess what they did? They got him in the middle of a move where he didn't even have his household goods. They suspended him without pay for 24 months. And you know why? They said, well, they weren't sure that he wasn't a security risk. Really? Really? Now think about that. So folks, I hope and pray that this is helpful to you. Um, I really do appreciate your support and I thank you for your patience. And here's what I'm going to say. Don't flip on to the next video and watch it without thinking, okay, what can I do? Register to vote. Get with other like-minded people and say, what can we do to organize in our communities? What do I need to do to be wise and prepared? One of the things he talked about was the importance of food and water and fundamental things. Folks, we're seeing this right now in North Carolina. What happens when everything is gone? A friend of mine in South Carolina, same thing. What do you do when all of this stuff goes away? Well, if you and I don't have a plan and we don't have stuff prepared, it doesn't tend to go well. Tactical training, can't stress it enough. Man, make sure that you're prepared. Do yourself a favor too. Begin to work on your physical fitness. I don't care how old or how debilitated you may be. You can get out and walk and do things if you can. Think, keep your mind active, be alert in public, and all the things we talk about on this channel. So I hope and pray this is helpful. Um, I, I will be doing more. Uh, please. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button, and comment to me because I really hope that this will create a groundswell. Um, you know, I've, I've, uh, in the national media, you know, whether it was Fox or international media, I've always tried to tell the truth because protecting an organization that is failing the American people is not good. <laughs> you see, those organizations all work. Uh, for us, the American people. And we can never forget that because that's why we fled England in the first place. <laughs> Way back in the, in the 1700s when the revolution started, King George was oppressive. He was controlling. He was dictatorial. Well, thank God our founder said, no, nah, we're not doing that. We're going to raise up a country that is free. And I hope and pray we can keep it that way. That's going to depend on you and I. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Stay safe out.